Welcome to Take 5 from Mazars. My name is Lisa Osofsky. I am a senior partner in our private client services practice, and I also serve on our executive board. I'm really happy to have a conversation today with Susan Asher from the Asher Group, and I'm going to give Susan an opportunity to introduce herself, and then we'll start talking a little bit about networking in this interesting environment. Hi, Lisa, and thanks again so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You know, we just spoke earlier. How do you differentiate yourself as an executive coach? Uh, what I do is I help people raise the bar in their careers. Maybe they're making a job change. Maybe they're working on, the, I just, someone just hired me because she wants to raise the bar in her executive presence. Uh, a CEO hired me for his COO because the guy is totally lacking in his emotional intelligence. Hmm. But it spans the entire leadership program that any company would have or anybody would have for themselves. And as you know, I'm also a published author. I've written two books. One is sort of about EQ, dude, seriously, it's not all about you. And the other one is more about IQ and leadership. And that's called dude, seriously, get your ask in gear. What do we have to ask ourselves to be leaders in the new millennium? And I read the first book and I enjoyed it very much. Do you have the second book? I have to get it to You'll you. You'll have to send it to me. I will. I will. You know, it's interesting because we talk a lot about relationships, right? Our business is all about relationships. And in business, it's all about the relationships you build. And we always talk about six degrees of separation. And these days we're talking about six feet apart, right? So we have that common six there. So in light of having to be six feet apart in the environment of not being able to network the way many of us are used to networking. So many people will go to industry events, right? They'll work the room or they'll go play golf or play tennis or do something where they're interacting with a lot of people. Or you and I who've had some nice one-on-one -on -one breakfasts or lunches together. Mm -hmm. So with all of those things either on hold or certainly limited, what are you seeing as a successful way for people to connect, build those relationships and network with each other in this environment? Right. So, and it's interesting that you and I did meet at a live event that was, I believe, sponsored by Mazars at Bloomingdale's. And yes. there were probably 40 women there that night. But in reality, you were the one that I was drawn to. And for a lot of reasons, because you're a sponsor of mine, et cetera, et cetera. But um, when we finally connected on email and sat down for breakfast, it was really like a whole, it was really great. And, and again, there were 40 people there. It didn't matter. I found the one person that I connected with. And here we are today, really not, what, what are we, 10 months later, nine? I don't even know the number. Yeah. But what I would say to people when we are going through these Zoom, uh, you know, networking events, I wouldn't say don't go. I would say go to them. There's also a way where everybody on that Zoom can look up on LinkedIn, who's on that Zoom call and instantaneously, I'm not gonna go into that, instantaneously connect with everybody across the board. Now, that may or may not be the right thing to do. So what I would suggest is that most of the time you'll be in a networking event like that, people will still introduce themselves. So you decide, do you need to talk to that banker? Is there someone that you're working with that you wanna to refer to them? Well, then you need to make sure you have their name and at this point, as I said, most of us are really on LinkedIn anyway. That's the way we could find someone. But it would also be a question to ask at the end of the forum to the person that's running it to say, by the way, if there's someone here that we want to connect with, are you sending out a group list? Uh, how will we know that we can connect with that person? And they will usually answer that. And many times they will send out a list of emails of all the people on there. But again, you have to hone in on what makes sense for you? It never makes sense in any event, whether there are a hundred people there or 10 people there to connect with every single one and think that every single one is gonna be in your cadre of networkers. So you have to decide that it can still be done. Uh, to me, it's become a little bit painful. I'm, a, I'm an avid golfer, as I think you know, I have played 80 rounds, probably half of which were with clients this summer. So that was my way of getting around it. And, you know, uh, plus the, the Zoom and et cetera, et cetera. So we just have to suck it up and do it. That's all. Yeah, and I think it's similar to when you would be networking in, in a normal situation where you find that one or two, you know, one or two people who seem like you'd have a tighter connection with or who seem like they fit in your center of influence world, right? right? And, and even now I have some other um, centers of influence, attorneys, advisors, et cetera. We're saying, hey, let's, let's get together over Zoom. Let's meet face to face right. for the moment. We can have a cup of coffee in front of us or not, right. but let's catch up. And I think you continue to keep those relationships warm 
Yes. So that when you do come out of this environment and can go back to being in a room with several people uh, or being one-on-one -on -one with everybody who's comfortable being one-on-one, -on -one, you know, you've mm -hmm. kept that relationship warm. So I think keeping current relationships warm in addition to trying to make new ones is, exactly. is an interesting angle as well. Very important. And you know, now as we, and hopefully they continue to stay where we are and, and progress, but as we see things opening up, you know, t like I, uh, at my office building, we have a whole yard full of Adirondack chairs. So during this nice stretch of weather, I have said to somebody, hey, you want to grab a cup of coffee and meet me outside? And we've done that. So right. we've, we've been kind of, and even my, my mastermind group, uh, we've done things outside. We, instead of sitting in, uh, you know, in a closed room somewhere, we've taken our, we've taken a walk in a park that we both are, you know, that we all, all eight of us are able to show up at. So, you know, you have to be creative, but you also have to say that this is just a time in our lives where we must use Zoom. We must, or phones, you know, or a phone call, but yeah. staying in touch with people is the key. It's not just because, you know, we're in a pandemic and life is a little bit different. We still have to make sure that we stay in touch with people. Yeah, and I think the, um, that connectivity is really important. Yes. And it's no different. So, so a lot of my networking is by dealing with other advisors, right, with clients. So if we work with professionals and high net worth individuals and families, there's attorneys and private bankers and insurance advisors and financial advisors. And we're all still very busy, right? I think we found in this environment, the B2B world is still very busy and still yeah. connecting. And so it's, it's a great opportunity for people to continue to stay connected where, hey, you know what, I had to speak with this attorney on behalf of my client. And certainly we may be doing a lot more estate planning in the coming weeks, depending on the results of the election. Mm -hmm. So let me let me introduce myself to that attorney if I don't know them already. Mm -hmm. And so what have you seen others doing as well to try to connect with the people that are not the directly a client target, for example, but those centers of influence around that client that can certainly help you know, generate revenue and business and referrals for each of us. I think, and certainly someone like you, and I would put myself in that category where we do have a large network and, you know, we, we have established that and we continue to establish it. Um, I just had a situation the other day um, with uh, one of my, one of my clients actually wanted to introduce me to Joan Herman. She has a show, it's called Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. And I said, gee, I'd love to, you know, I'd love to be on her show. Um, and I'd love to see what I could do to help her maybe get more people on that show. And so two minutes later, I had an email from my friend, my client saying, hey, I want to introduce you to. So there's a lot of that going on as well. So when you are talking to someone and, and something, a light bulb goes off that, you know, that person you're talking to is telling you, oh, you know, I'm not that happy with my accounting firm right now or my legal firm, or I'm looking to change careers. Think of who you know that right. you can you know, refer them to and do it right away. But it's the same thing when you go to a large networking event. M many people will say, oh, we must have lunch. You call me, I'll call you. And, you know, you know that I'm the queen of follow-up. I mean, <laughs> you know that from personal experience. I think we both are, yes. Yes, yes, we both are. But um, yes, and so I think, and didn't mean to put it that way, so I apologize. But yes, <laughs> we both are. And a lot of people will say that kind of a thing, right, because they just think, oh, I'll just say it. But if you don't put it into practice, and now it's especially important to be creative, to do the Zoom, to say, meet me outside. Again, it's not going to happen when we start to see the snowfall, but I really think that there are many ways that we can get around it and uh, make it fun. Just keep talk, just keep connecting, keep talking, keep calling. If they don't want to do Zoom, make a phone call, do whatever it takes to, to stay connected. And I think in the world of these relationships, what I've also found really helpful is introducing um, other centers of influence to, to other centers of influence, right? So if I necessarily can't be helpful or don't have an opportunity to work together with that person, maybe I can introduce you to someone else I know and the two of you can do business together, right? And that's a great, that's a great way to help you know, keep connectivity. It's credibility for me. If I've made that introduction, they're in, they end up being able to work together or share clients. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's another way. I think it's all about um, the relationships, as you say, and being able to make sure that you are connecting and touching and adapting in this environment to keep those conversations going. Because the more you keep the conversations going and the more you're, you're staying in touch, you're not out of sight, out of mind. Right. I'm going to end on this note. The great executive coach Zig Ziglar once said, you will get everything in life if you help other people get what they want. And that's what networking is all about. So keep at it. Keep going. This will end at some point. 
and we just got to keep the faith. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you.